Welcome to our second practice section on setting up a foam injection model. First, I'd like to investigate the properties of CO2 in this block, properties being density and the viscosity of CO2. This is important because we are injecting above the critical pressure of CO2, so I'm expecting CO2 to possess a liquid density and to retain the viscosity of the gas. To investigate this, we will first define the path, you know, along, you know, from this injector well to the producer well. We'll define the path there. Then we'll plot the properties of CO2 with respect to time and space. So we want to know how CO2 is behaving as it transitions from this injector well to somewhere in the reservoir or towards the producer well. So we'll define the path investigate that. After which I'll walk you through um, how you can define some of your input parameter in the simulator, specifically the volume fractions. As you know we'll be co-injecting CO2, surfactant and water so it is quite important to know um, because you're injecting at the surface what volume fractions are you injecting or are you going to inject to meet your desired foam quality at the reservoir conditions. So I will walk you through all that. But first, I'd like to do some housekeeping on this particular graph that I have on the right hand side here. I just want to make it, I just want to make the y axis to be a maximum of 100. So to do that, make sure you're clicking on this particular graph here and make sure that um, you are under the plot properties and you can highlight this auto range. You can deselect the auto range and make it 100. After that, just click anywhere else you know, on the chart and it changes the perspective with the maximum on the y-axis being 100. Like I said earlier, since we want to investigate the properties of CO2 um, spatially and with respect to time from this injector well to the producer well, um, means we have to output the properties of CO2 being densities and viscosity. Then I have an Excel file that I will walk you through on determining the, the volume fractions. So to output the, the properties of CO2, I just want you to go back to your data file. You can go back to your builder. For me, I'm going back to my builder here so I can go to the IO control. That's input output control and I click on this and go to simulation result output. So while I click on the simulation result output, I can go to these from simulation results file this out here and I can go to this initial on that grid section I can click on select so I want to output the viscosity of CO2 and the density of CO2 um, so if you go under the keyword section here the M so I want to output this mass density of CO2 so I select that I also want to output the viscosity of CO2, so I go on that V, which is the keyword. I go to you know, the V, so I want to output this gas viscosity, so I click on that as well. So while I'm satisfied with those two, I click on OK and OK. It means I have to rerun this particular um, block to be able to output you know, the gas viscosity and the gas density. So I click on stars and submit and run. Assuming you have um, finished running that case, the next thing you have to do is click on reread now. So once you click on reread, it has the ability to reload your new results in here. So the next thing we have to do is to define the path. If I just go to the to the you know the 3D view of my model, I want to define a path. So if I right click again to rotate, um, right click here, I click on rotate, and I can move around. So if I want to define the path. This is my injector well, so my reference would be I want I to I want my path to be I because you have to define the three coordinates. So I want to investigate how the CO2 behaves, you know, along this injector well towards this producer well from the middle. That's from this block here, which is um, the fifth block in the J direction to the um, to the producer well. So if I want to do that, I have to go to the linear path here on that is input. I click on my linear path. So I have to define my path. So I want to define my path. I want it to be the first block in the I direction. Then I want it to be the 
fifth block in the in the J direction, then just going then I want it to be the third or I want it to be on the fourth K block. So I want it or I can make it the fifth K block. So I want it to be one five five. So what I'm what I really mean is that um, I want it to be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So I want to see how the CU two behaves from this particular um, block you know, this grid towards the, the, the producer. Or to be more correct, since the CO2, you know, typically stays on the top of the structure, I can even make it the second block. So one, five, two will be the best thing to do. So coming here, I want to make this one, five, two as well. Then I want to make the last, you know, towards the, the, the producer wall to be 20, five, two. So the reason I'm putting 25, two is because um, if I just here, I have, you know, this is the 20th grid here. So I just want to retain the characteristics or the properties of the J and K block. So if I'm okay with that, so once you're okay with that, you click anywhere else here and you have a, a you have a path to find that you want to investigate all the properties that you want to do. Um, so whilst that is done, the next thing you have to do is go to profile. So under your plot here, you can see profile here. So just click on profile and you can see under the path type, you can see well, charger tree, linear sector and PLT. I want to look at linear. Then my data sources hasn't changed. It's still in pure CO2 injection I'm using. Now look at the new path that I define here, 152 to 252. I want to investigate that. Then I want, you can see now I have gas mass density here. I also have a gas viscosity right here. So I have the gas mass density, I have the gas viscosity. And you can see that I have the path right here. So again, I can now click on my gas mass density to look at that initial condition, which is um, March 22nd, 20, 20 um, 2022. I can click on that and I can click on add a new plot. So you can see the way it's behaving here. You can see I have my distance right here and I have my gas mass density here. So if I wanted to change, um, you know, a different time step, say I wanted to look at, you know, how um, it's doing along that path, you know, after three years of injection, I can add the curve and I can see exactly, you know, how it's behaving this way. And I can as well, you know, flip my curve. I can flip this curve to have my distance on the X axis and have my, my gas density on the Y axis. So to flip the curve, I think you can go to your plot property here and just swap your axis. So click on your plot property and you go to swap axis. So if you look at how the CO2 is behaving here, you can see that CO2 takes up um, more like the density of the liquid here. So I can investigate this particular um, property of CO2 being the mass density in terms of different time steps. So if I look at in terms of 2026 in March, you can see just click on 2026 March here in the time step and add call. You see again that um, CO2 was still able to retain the same density here. Then this is where, you know, with under this time step, this is where CO2 was able to reach, you know, through this block. Then if I look at 2027 in terms of March as well, you can see that CO2 rightly, you know, is behaving well, retaining the, you know, wherever it can get up to at that pressure is 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 behaving just like like that of a like retaining the density of the gas. So the next thing we have to investigate is to see how well um, CO2 behave in terms of you know how the viscosity is. Um, so again, I can just um, come here to this profile. I can um, click on this particular data source. I can go to my injector. I can come here and click on the gas density and go to the the earlier period, like the first time step, and click on add plot. So again, you can see I have my distance here and my gas viscosity here. Like the other one, we can see the gas, gas viscosity of CO2 to be 0 0.01, but let's flip this particular chart just to be consistent with you know the gas mass, this gas mass density chart. So I can you know click on this plot property here and go to swap axis. So at the beginning, I can ha I see my CO2 to be having 0 0.01 um, centipoise. Um, if I move a time step, you know, from this is the earlier time, I go to say March 2022nd, 
um, I can okay I can go to um, 2025 March like I did the other guy click on that you can see you know the, the density the viscosity of CO2 is still about the same so this is very over emphasized you can look at the scales this is about 0 0.01 I can even go and check 2027 in terms of March and you can see that yeah regardless of this you know this this huge difference between this and this is actually very small it's, you can see this guy is 0 0.01 and this guy is 0 0.0155 so that's about the same thing so now that I'm satisfied that my CO2 behaves to just as it should, retaining the density of a gas, of a liquid, you know, under the conditions I'm injecting it and retaining the viscosity of a gas. Um, it means that I, that is just giving me um, a little, you know, confidence in my model that, you know, the CO2 is behaving just as it should. So just to do further, I can even, you know, put all this on my dashboard I can left click drag my mass density and put it right here I can left click drag my viscosity and put it right here and you know really you know do some housekeeping here um, feel free to do some housekeeping here as much as you want you can name this your property plot and you can you know double click on this legend here and rename this legend to uh, however you prefer it and want it um, to be short concise and descriptive if you want it like that and as well you know this whatever you want to do here you have the flexibility to change this particular dashboard to your proof your, your own preference um, for me I just want to jump onto this Excel sheet I have um, created before now and just kind of give an overview of the things that we'll be doing in the next practice section um, first if you look at this Excel sheet it really, is, it really describes, you know, a certain um, foam quality that, you know, that has been injected. Um, for example, this, is, this was done per unit volume of reservoir condition. And you really have to, because you're injecting at surface condition and you are co-injecting more than one fluid. Um, so you are co-injecting CO2, surfactant and water. Um, you definitely need to beforehand and which would serve as input into the reservoir simulator to calculate the volume fractions. In calculating the volume fractions will be, you know, a putting into consideration what we have in terms of CO2 gas expansion between the um, the surface condition and the re between the reservoir condition and the surface condition. We need to understand, you know, fluid compressibilities to 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 actually arrive at these volume fractions. We need to also understand formation volume factors and, and ETC. So in the next practice class, I will walk you through a creation of a database um, that you can always use as a reference to, to really you know, walk through your desired form injection quality. So if I wanted to inject 80% quality of form, um, how much do I need to inject in terms of this, um, this fluid? So in the next class, we'll continue on that. See you then.